Welcome to this video which demonstrates how to perform pure tone audiometry on the Affinity, Equinox and Callisto. A Callisto has been used for demonstration in this video, however the information can be applied to use of the Callisto, Affinity and Equinox. This video has been created to educate on the basic controls and instructions required to perform audiometry on your interacoustics equipment. During this video, please feel free to rewind or fast forward on the sections which you may have a particular interest. In this example, the suite has been opened via a direct link from a NOAA database. However, it may be that you're required to open the suite from your proprietary patient management system. Please check on how to open this with your IT administrator. Once a suite has opened, you can choose your test protocol via this dropdown. It is likely that this has been created in advance of you using your software by your audiology administrator or training lead. Your protocol contains all the preset parameters and settings required to operate your audiometry testing. The black box in the centre of the screen is central to your testing. This indicates both channel 1 and channel 2 and how they are performing in relation to your stimulus. Channel 1 is always the test ear. Despite this being positioned above the right audiogram, you will notice it can be configured to test for both the right and left ear. Channel 2 is always your non-test ear and used specifically when masking. The system is configured to always switch to the opposite ear whenever you change the test ear. On each channel side you can choose which transducer is being used and also the stimulus. The system can be operated via mouse control or via PC keyboard shortcuts. The test ear can be swapped by pressing the L or R key on your PC keyboard. These shortcut keys resemble left and right. Should you wish to change the test ear with your mouse, you can choose to click on the ear side graph that you want to test, or choose the opposite transducer in the channel 1 output list. To choose your intensity, you can click on the vertical arrows in the suite for the channel you wish to change, or use the up and down arrow keys. To extend your testing range for intensities higher than 100 decibels, you can click on the extended range icon or press the E shortcut key. The frequency is changed by clicking on the horizontal arrows in the suite or by use of the left and right arrow keys. To stimulate, you can choose to hover your mouse over the stimuli icon at the top of the screen or press the spacebar. Notice that when either of these are done, the stimuli button lights up to give an indication that a stimulus is being produced. The patient's response via the response button is displayed in the software via a light in this location. To store a response, you can use the left click on the stimuli icon or press the S shortcut key. To store a not heard response, you can right click on the stimuli icon or press the N shortcut key. To begin performing bone conduction testing, you can press the B shortcut key to change to the bone transducer, or click on the BC transducer from your output list. To turn on masking, you can press the 8 key. This is swapping channel 2 from manual to reverse. Should you wish to do this with the mouse, then you can click on the reverse icon to begin the stimulation. Notice how the channel 2 stimuli button lights up when the masking is being played through the channel 2 transducer. The masking intensity can be controlled via the page up and page down shortcut keys, or by clicking on the increase decrease intensity arrows for channel 2. To delete a point if it's been added in error, you can right click on the point and choose to delete the threshold, or you can delete the curve. Your audiometry symbols will automatically change based on the condition you are stimulating under. For example, a mask symbol will appear if you have enabled masking. As default, your system may be configured to display the audiometry in two graphs, one for each ear side. However, you can click on this icon or press the shortcut Shift and A to display both the right and left ear data in one graph. 
This is useful when determining which ear to mask and how much masking to apply. Underneath the protocol selector is a session browser. All testing must be performed in the current session, but you can use this drop down to review older audiometry sessions which have previously been created under this patient. This includes sessions which may have been performed on non interacoustic systems. To bring an older session into view, click on the data to bring it up. Notice that when this is done, the black box at the centre of the screen and the channel options grey out. This is because this is historic data and it cannot be modified. Should you wish to bring an audiometric session into view for comparison, then you can choose to click on the checkbox alongside the audiometry date. This data will then be shown on the audiogram in a lighter colour. This allows you to perform testing on top of the historic data or to show progression of a patient's hearing loss when explaining their hearing impairment. When discussing the patient's hearing loss with them, we've incorporated some counselling overlays to ease understanding. These can be accessed via the left toolbar. There are several overlays which display phonemes, sound examples, speech banana and severity. Although we can apply these overlays, it can still seem overwhelming and unnecessary for the patient to see all the controls from the audiometry testing. This is why we have also developed the patient monitor screen to help display only the information which is important. Again, the overlays can be applied to this display. Should you wish to make measurements other than just threshold measurements, then you can select most comfortable level or uncomfortable loudness level. Selecting either of these will change the symbol sets. Operations of these other tests are performed in the same way as instructed previously in this video. Should you be operating in an environment where you're not sitting close to the patient when testing, for example when using a booth for audiometry, then you can use the talk backwards and talk forward function. To enable talk forward, please click on the talk forward icon. This feature is only enabled when it's clicked and will allow you to present your voice through the audiometric headset being used. This is useful when you need to re-instruct the patient on the test or for positive reinforcement. The talk back function allows you to listen in to what the patient is saying inside the booth via a microphone in that location. This audio will be routed to a headset that you are wearing. Once you've completed your audiogram, you can then choose to print the data via this icon. Should you not wish to print but just save, then you can choose to save and clear the screen via the save and new session button or save and exit the software back to your database via this icon. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Should you require more information, then please see the Interacoustics Academy website, the Interacoustics Hearing Aid Fitting Quick Guides, or the Additional Information Manual.